what what I've started doing that I that I want to start doing with other people is um, <coughs> is this thing uh, called let's edit Wikipedia together where uh, basically I will read to someone their own Wikipedia article mm -hmm. and this will be it'll it'll be interesting you know you can see how accurate it is and you know we can we can both see how right. much it needs to be edited and um right uh yours is actually rather short would you would you like to yeah let's do it let's, yeah let's do right. that That'd and be great. this this will be also be recorded and this is something that uh i'm recording and i will release to the internet immediately <clears throat> after yep. so as this is for public consumption i'm letting you know and essentially so that i can use this recording as a source in your wikipedia article sure because my i don't even know what mine says but let me well it's Go rather ahead, short me. and it's not even chronological but i'll i will fix that when i edit this but it says and i will read this to you in full eric skirmerhorn Eric Skirmerhorn, born on April 11, 1961, is an American guitarist and composer. He played with Iggy Pop on the American Caesar and Naughty Little Doggy albums, and David Bowie on the Tin Machine It's My Life tour as background vocalist and guitarist, and appeared in the video and live record Oy Vey Baby. He later played with They Might Be Giants on Factory Showroom, Severe Tire Damage, and Mono Puffs It's Fun to Steal. He also played with Seal and appeared in the video release One Night to Remember. He also has recorded with Melissa Etheridge and Rico Kasich. He also wrote and recorded with Richard Butler of the Psychedelic Furs. Since 1995, starting with the work on the album Hanky Panky, he became the guitarist for the band The The, replacing Johnny Marr. In 1998, he wrote and recorded Living in the Present Future with Eagle Eye Cherry, son of jazz trumpeter Don Cherry. He played with Maria Gabriela Epumer's band A1, and in 1996 they recorded the album Senorita Corazon. In 1999 and 2000, with Matt Johnson of The The, he co-wrote, recorded, and toured the Naked Self record, accompanied by Earl Harvin on drums and Spencer Campbell on bass. Upon moving to Los Angeles in 2001, he wrote for Jason Mraz's first album, Waiting for My Rocket to Come. Mm -hmm. Working with Linda Perry, he wrote and recorded for Pink's Try This CD. He joined Seal's band and in 2003 wrote and recorded the System album, as well as Seal's Live in Paris album and DVD. Cheryl Crow covered a song he co-wrote with Brian McLeod and Bill Botchel called Shine Over Babylon for her Detours album. He has a production, <clears throat> he has a production company called Chimp with producer Pete Min in Los Angeles. That's it. Okay. Um, interesting. It isn't chronological. Um, I think what was left out. I played with Lucinda Williams in 2009. You could say Lucinda Williams. Yeah. Toured with Lucinda Williams in 2009. Um, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think what was left out. Hmm. It's, it's, yeah, it needs to be chronological. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm, hmm. What would you, in interviewing someone for a Wikipedia page, what would you do? Well, uh, Wikipedia biographies have very handsome sections of early life and then career and then ah. specifically for musicians it's early life career uh personal life discography and then references okay so we could start right with early life born in massachusetts right yes yes uh where in massachusetts long uh long i guess i was born in springfield mass springfield mass
and I have listened to one of your past interviews with uh, uh, Will Garrett. That, oh yeah, oh, that was a, nope. that's a really good one. But that that is also a really good source that I will end up using in your Wikipedia article. It is first, oh, it's first hand primary source. Can you put links to YouTube videos or not? Yes. This this recording is a YouTube video, essentially. Okay. Um, Yeah, so Springfield, Mass. was where I was born. Yes. And then Berkeley College of Music. If you want to go there, college, boss, moved to Boston in 1979. Oh, I remember going through your LinkedIn page for those years. Sure. Yeah, and I can give you stuff that happened in Boston bands. There were two, three big bands in Boston. Uh -huh. I remember in that Will Garrett interview, you mentioned uh, one band that had a rather interesting name. I can't remember. Yeah, who uh, uh Yes. No, that was my first crystal thing. something yeah. we could talk about who uh, uh, that was mm -hmm. three people 1979 to 1982 is when you attended In Berkeley Boston. College of Music yeah, yeah. What, what else can you think about at the moment? Oh, from that period? I would say at Berkeley, I started a band called Ooh ah, ah, which is O-O-H mm. dash A-H dash A-H exclamation. And it was a three-piece with the TR, Roland TR-808 mm. drum machine. Um, Do you remember which what note? year that band formed? Yeah, 1980. Using the 808 pretty early on. Eight, 1980. Yeah, we were the ones in America because the bass player was Japanese. You could say the bass player was Japanese. And he brought it back from Tokyo. And no one, no one had one. Mm. I can give you his name, Akio, A-K-I-O, Akashi, A-K-A-S-H-I, was the bass player. So and that band again, involved... I'm, I'm, I'm not writing re really fast, I'm so sorry. Oh no, his name was Akio, A-K-I-O, Akashi, A-K-A-S-H-I, and he brought back the first TR-808 to America in 1980. Okay. And that band was produced by David Robinson, the drummer in the cars. He saw us in a club and produced us at the car studio in, in Boston. Mm -hmm. Synchro Sound. Want me to spell that, the studio name? Yes, please. S Y N C H R O. Sound S O U N D. The Cars had their own studio in Boston. And they saw us. It was, it was a three-piece band: guitar, Keo played bass, 
drum machine and a female singer. As an aside, is it through this connection that you ended up recording with Rick Ocasek later? Yes. You're putting it together. (laughs) (laughs) And the singer in Ua'a is Cindy. I-N-D-Y Logger L-A-G-E-R and she's important because she's in a band I'm in later that gets a record deal in Capitol mm-hmm. so was that, that, that was the that was ooh, uh, yeah. mm. the, the band that got a record deal well later the band called East of Eden mm-hmm. and we got a record deal in Capitol in 1987 and she was the singer mm-hmm. <sighs> I remember looking up on Discogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So that was a uh, uh, and Rick, uh, we worked at this car studio. Mm-hmm. We never got a record deal. Um, and then I joined a band called Adventure Set in 1983. Adventure set mm-hmm. with a single Blues for Boys, which was a big hit in Boston on WBCN. Mm-hmm. So that was Adventure set till 1985. And then East of Eden was 1986. Uh, 87. And that's with Cindy Logger singing. Yes. And we got a deal on Capitol in 1987. You tell me when you want to write more. I got it. I'm t- I'm doing really quick notes. Oh, okay. And that was produced by Roy Thomas Baker. He used to be. Yes. And that, he's a big producer. He did Queen and the Cars. So that was East of Eden. So we opened, we toured East of Eden for the Psychedelic Furs. And that's how I met Richard Butler in the Psychedelic Furs, was East of Eden touring in 1989. We toured with Psychedelic Furs. Okay. And then that band broke up in 1989. And that's when I moved to New York, 1990. You'd say that band broke up in 1990. We, then I moved to New York. Moved to New York. Um. And then in 1991, I got the audition for Tin Machine with David Bowie. So that's that's the chronological order. Yes. You have spoken about David Bowie a lot in books and classic rock publications. I think I yeah. can just cite those. Um, yeah. Amazing time. That was a year tour. Mm-hmm. And from there, at Iggy. And then I started playing with Iggy right after Bowie. So that, and then from Iggy was the, the name I all the other stuff that listed and after Iggy and the uh, name might be Giants. Yes. But that all came about by living in New York. Those gigs. Yeah.
Um, do you remember how you got to recording with Melissa Etheridge? Yes, that was through a producer friend of mine. Well, it was from Linda Perry. And I also recorded with her again with Rick Parasher. R-I-C-K P-A-R-A-S-H-E-R Great producer. So it was those two producers that led me to Melissa Etheridge. And what year was that when you met when you met then? I met Linda in 1999, and she was out in L.A., and that's one reason I moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. was more studio work. So you could say Linda Perry, 1999. Yes. And Rick Parasher, Rick Parasher was like 2001, and he was in Seattle. Great, mm -hmm. he did a lot of big records. I I will just put this on the record. Uh, to note for public consumption that Eric Skirmerhorn's uh, connection with They Might Be Giants came about through a mutual friend, Robert Quine. Yeah. And oh, yeah. This, was, this, this is information that I parsed from our first interview on March 11th, 2024. Yeah, and he was a good friend, Quine. Mm -hmm. I liked Quine. Uh, 1995 is when he joined They Might Be Giants. December of 1996 is when he left. Um, so... Yeah. But he ended up playing with Monopuff until 1998. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You got it. Good. Yes. Um... How did you end up uh, working with the the? That came from my friend Michael Hausman, who's a, who was in till Tuesday, the drummer until Tuesday, and now he's a manager. He called me and told me Matt was in New York looking for a guitar player, mm -hmm. and that would have been that was like 1993. And I met him, and we decided we would work together. Mm -hmm. So I met Matt in 1993. From a mutual friend, yeah. Yes. You moved to you moved to Los Angeles. In, in August, August, August 2001. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how did you how did you get the connection with Jason Mraz? That was through my publishing company, Cobalt K O B A L T. Cobalt, because I moved out here to write songs with people and to do records. Mm -hmm. And then Seal was 2003, and that came from mutual friends as well. Mutual friends, Chris Bruce, who's you very well known now, Chris Bruce, C-H-R-I-S. Bruce, B-R-U-C-E, played bass with Seal, and Earl Harvin played drums with Seal. Mm -hmm. And he was in La La. So he rec they recommended me to Seal. So it's Earl Harvin that brought that connection? Yes. Mm -hmm. Seal and Chris Bruce. Yes. And Chris, you know, those two guys are good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, working with Linda Perry, he wrote and recorded for Pink's Try This CD. Uh, what was how did how did so it was basically through Linda Perry that that connection with Pink came about. Yeah, yes, I did a lot of session work for Linda mm -hmm. and Christine Aguilera. It's Christina Aguilera Records, Melissa Etheridge, um, Pink, 
who else did we do? Um, I'm trying to remember who else. And then Cheryl Crow, that was through my friend Brian McLeod, drum, drummer Brian McLeod, who plays on the, the Hanky Panky. When did you first start working with Pink? I think, I'm not really sure of the year, what year that was. Probably 2002 with Linda. Mm -hmm. Christina Aguilera? Same thing, 2002, 2003. Right when I moved here, yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you first start working with Cheryl Crow? That was later, probably 2005. I wrote that song with Brian McLeod and Bill Bottrell. Cinda Williams, 2009. How did that connection come about? That came through my friend Dave Levita. Dave Levita, L-E-V-I-T-A. He found out they needed, she needed a guitar player, so I did a year tour with her. Um, that was 2009 world tour, a full year. Chimp isn't just a production company. It is. Oh, it was recording. We would record and write with artists, me and Pete, Pete Min. Deep mm -hmm. MIN. And now he has a record label, which you could put in called Color Field. Color, Color Field Records. From your LinkedIn page, Chimp was 2001 to 2012. So is, is this how you ended up working for Jason Mraz, Seal, Pink, Christina Aguilera, people like this? You mean through the production company? Yeah. No, you would say, I would say the production company was more music for films, film music, um, TV stuff we would, and songwriting, but that not those that was a separate thing I did with Pete. You could just say it was a production company, music production company for TV and film. I will say this, this article has nothing about your voiceover work. Um, but that started around the 2009 time frame. Uh, 2011. Yes. But I don't know if I should mention that. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's, it's, a, it's a good long part of your career. You ended up doing work for Family Guy, American Dad, The Doctors. Uh, yeah. Many advertisements. So it's... I think push... American Dad and Family Guy, I like that. Put that first. Yeah. Because that was the that was the coolest stuff. Yeah. And I basically stayed home in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and worked in the studio. 
I worked in my studio and then just raised my kids. I mean, that's when I stopped touring, 2009, 2010. 2010 stops touring. Stayed home in Los Angeles to do sessions and songwriting and voiceover and raise my two boys. This is personal life section stuff. <laughs> he lives in Los Angeles with his wife and two kids. Yeah. The personal yeah. life section is usually rather sparse because I think there's a good thing on Wikipedia where it's like we want to respect the people's pr yes, the yeah. privacy of the artist. Yeah, I like that. That's enough information, yeah. Yeah. Um What else? Um, now, what are you doing? Um, good question. Just session work, guitar, guitar work, and you know, songwriting, but mainly some session work. Not as much, you know. Mm -hmm. You could just say continues to do sessions in Los Angeles. And is going to put out a record with Pete Min on Color Field Records. I'm working on a record with Pete. Working on a new album with Pete Min. When's that set to release? Do you know? It should be 2025. 2025. And then you get the Color Field Records on Color Field Records. That sounds exciting. Yeah, it'll be good. I'll get you a copy. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'd rather buy one to support the artist, but. Oh, uh, but it's Color Field, like one word C O L O R. Yeah, Color Field. Oh, Thanks. one word. Yeah. Uh, what else? That's about it. For, yeah. Yeah. You've you've done a lot, actually. Dave, David Bowie, Iggy Pop, I mean, Christina Aguilera, Seal, They Might Be Giants, Pink, yeah. Jason Mraz, Melissa Etheridge. That is a lot of really interesting people that you've worked with. Oh, you know what you could say in 2001 when I moved to L.A.? Sorry, I, I, I toured with, um, oh, God, what's her name? Country artist. Oh man, I just blanked. Hang on, let me think about this. Bill Patrell produced her record because you should put this in. Um, he, um, hang on, you're in a discography. Uh, Shelby Lynn. Oh yes. So put in 2001. Promo tour with Shelby Lynn. I also let me, let me give you some more. 1996 promo tour with Paula Cole. You know Paula Cole, right? Yes, that. And I'm in her. I'm in the video where all the cowboys going. You can say that. <laughs> Paula Cole. So this was Paula. this was during that time period of uh yeah. i don't want to what's that song called the dawson's creek theme song what is it called yeah I think, yes i played guitar yeah but so you could just say i played with paula cole on her video where i'm all the cowboys going 1996 yes oh and maria gabriella boomer that's yeah. on there She's great. And then when I moved to L.A. in 2002, I forgot I played with Marion Faithful for an Andy Warhol exhibit at the museum opening up an Andy Warhol exhibit. I played acoustic for him. But we did some duet, like I played with her. Marion Faithful, yeah. When, when was this? Oh, 2002. Wow. 
that was just one gig with Marion Faith. It was cool. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look that up and see when that was. I think it was. I think it was two thousand. Uh, you know how you forget dates. Of. <laughs> what can I think of having interviewed you four times before this? Well, you can glue all this together, right? I, I can, yes. And this is all for your Wikipedia page. But yeah. so I will. Thanks. But let's see. I know you're doing voiceover work for me, but that's not out yet, and it won't be for a few years. Uh, but you could say I do. I do voiceover. Yeah. You, you technically still do, even though I know you said yeah, you yeah. stopped. Yeah. But for you, for friends and stuff, just say, like, yeah, you can say it. American Dad and Family Guy is great. I'm mm-hmm. proud of that. Stuff I don't really care about. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The doctors and all that. Ass. Yeah. Yeah. What? What's it like doing voiceover work for animation? It was interesting going to those work with those guys um did you read it three or four times and it was really fast you're waiting in line because there's a bunch of other people you're waiting in the waiting room looking at the script and then they call you in and you go and sometimes you read with other people and sometimes it's just you and you you know they you give them three or four different shot you know ideas and then that's it and they're laughing because it's got to be funny those shows right Mm -hmm. so you have to have the delivery comedic timing to a degree and I loved it but it was quick man they were it, it, you're cranking it out you know? you're there for 15 minutes maybe half hour at the most how much involvement did Seth MacFarlane have in that process he wasn't there I don't believe he had his producers there directing me mm-hmm. for, for those characters that I played they're very simple I was always the guy pizza delivery guy or the you know the the, the wacky characters who show up. Yeah. Uh, did he? Did he even know you were in his show? Did he know you existed? And well, did not, he know of your it, history? And you know what's funny? When, when those guys love, they might be giants. I think that helped. They might be giants helped. I'd walk in. Oh man! So wait, you played with they might be giants? Oh my god! Like all the writers were there, and all the producers were way into the giants. So that definitely helped. <laughs> it's funny. Those guys are so, you know, in that community, they're very well respected. Yes. In that comedy, comedy world, dark comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you'll show it to me, right? Oh yes, it's it's just Eric Skirmerhorn on Wikipedia. Uh, okay, and and Good, I'm and I even put up the IPA pronunciation of your name. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you for doing this, man. Of I course. Appreciate it. Of course. It it's, really helps. It's about preservation. Yeah. Now, do you need? I haven't been on Wikipedia. There's no. They don't put photos up. It's just. Well, yeah, they do. Um, I. I can definitely find, I mean, there's that really good one of you standing along the wall and looking straight at the camera. I'll put that up then with yeah. a jacket, like a jacket on. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah, crazy put hair. <laughs> put that up, put that one up. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Um, 
trying to think if I can think of anything else. That would, I'll think of some stuff. Um, yeah. I'm missing. <sighs> I'm missing anything. It'll come to me. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk next week. Let's talk next week, and then you can tell me how the Wikipedia, Wikipedia is coming along. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Is that good? Yeah, yes, thank really you. really helped. So we'll talk next week. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.